The range of the numbers in set S is X, and the range of the numbers in set T is Y. If all the numbers in set T are also in set X, is X greater than Y. So just a reminder, what range is, is the difference between the maximum value minus the minimum value. So it's the spread from max to min. That is the range. And so every member of T is also in S. Mathematically, we would say that T is a subset of S, but that doesn't really matter here. And we want to know, does S have a bigger range than Y? Well, statement number one tells us that set S has seven members. Well, that tells us nothing about T, no information about T, so this statement is insufficient by itself. Forget that. Focus on statement number two. This tells us that set T has six members. Well, now we know nothing about set S, so this is also insufficient. Now combine them. So now we know that set T has six members and set S has some members. Let's take an, a hypothetical example. Suppose set T equals the set 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, a six-member set. And so we know that set S will have all of these members and one more member. So set S will be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and then something else. Well, that something else could be something far outside of that set. It could be something like 117, in which case the range of S would be much bigger than the range of T, and X would be greater than Y. Or what could go in there is something that is right in the middle of those numbers, say like 5, for example, right smack dab in the middle of that set, in which case the range of S would be exactly equal to the range of T. X would equal Y, in which case the answer to the question is X greater than Y, the answer would be no. So we can pick some numbers that would give a yes answer to the prompt question, some answers that would give a no answer to the prompt question. And because we can answer the prompt question in both ways, it means that even with the combined information, we are still insufficient. So combine the statements are insufficient, and the answer is E.